Hello, lovelies. Well, we're going to go a little bit darker today. <laughs> I have mentioned in the past how prescient I feel that Rudolf Steiner has been. He seems to have seen the future and predicted the most important considerations for today and for the coming future. There is a notion that I have seen bandied about on the internet lately, and that is of the eighth sphere. Now, the problem with <laughs> Steiner as I see it is that, as well as being prescient, he is also prolific. And as a result, there is just so much of his material to cover. And I have probably scratched the very, very surface of it. I tend to dive down into the subjects that interest me. And up until recently, I wasn't even aware that there was a subject about the eighth sphere until I was watching um, Dark Journalist. I don't know. I'm sure you've come across Dark Journalist. And while I really enjoy Dark Journalist, <laughs> I find it difficult to dive in deeply enough and coherently enough, as is the nature of a question and answer show, because People ask questions, and he bounces from side to side to answer those questions. And so I decided to do a little bit of research myself on this subject of the eighth sphere. Of course, I went to the source first, and I found some lectures given by Steiner on the subject. And it itself was a controversial subject, even in Steiner's time as apparently Alfred Percy Sinnott unleashed, essentially, what had been the secret subject of the Eighth Sphere onto the intellectual landscape. But he did so in a manner that was erroneous. Now, it's interesting because when I saw Sinnott, I'm like, I've seen Sinnott everywhere. And Sinnott was indeed a prolific English theosophist. And I haven't read any of Sinnott yet directly, but possibly after hearing what Rudolf Steiner had to say about him, I'm going to stick with, well, not about what he said anyway, I'm going to stick with Steiner on the subject. But it was a subject that was withheld because apparently we couldn't handle the truth. <laughs> But anyway, my uh, research has taken me down quite a rabbit hole, and I have come across a few commentators on the subject that I found stunningly interesting. And let me tell you, this might be the rabbit hole to end all rabbit holes, particularly in relation to what we see going on today. And if anything, this rabbit hole has increased my resolve to stand firm against the onrush of forces that seek the transhuman reality. But I'm going to save that aspect for another lecture because, I've, as I said, I found two commentators that do an amazing job around this subject. So I'm going to start with reading you an article by an author <laughs> whose name is very interesting, Marco Hen Newman. And he seems to give a really great summary of the ideas that are contained within the story of the eighth sphere. So let me read this to you. The article's name is The Eighth Sphere, Humans Caught in a Trap. 
The concept was created by the English theosophist Alfred Percy Sinnott and further developed by the philosopher Rudolf Steiner. The establishment could not digest Steiner because he did not play by the rules. The concept of the Eight Sphere was introduced in two lectures given by Steiner in 1915 under the title The Occult Movement in the 18th Century and its Relation to Modern Culture. In the list of spheres, one becomes aware that this is by no means ordinary astronomy. Saturn, the Sun, the Moon, the Earth... Jupiter, Venus, Vulcan, and the Eighth Sphere. These are stages in human evolution. Steiner is not easy to understand. Everything gets complicated. The Eighth Sphere is to be understood as a leftover from what he calls the Old Moon. It suggests something archaic and regressive. The Sphere, according to Steiner, does not have a physical appearance and is not outside the earth. It is encapsulated in the earth and has to do with the fact that Araman and Lucifer have bound the earth in an artificial state. Already here you may be lost in space and translation if you've not come across and studied Steiner. But hang on, it gets interesting. The eighth sphere is thus something that has been stored in the Earth sphere and that holds us back as humanity. Araman is the Mephist... See, I still can't say it. <laughs> Mephistophelic principle, said Goethe, the contradictor or Satan that Steiner borrowed from the Aryan or Iranian ancient religion Zoroastrianism and Avesta, the Iranian books of wisdom. He himself says that he downloaded it from the Akashic Records, the database of the universe, so to speak. Briefly described, Araman is our tendency to be caught in external deceptions. All that glistens is not gold, as the pseudonym Shakespeare wrote in a famous sonnet. The Vedic philosophers called it Maya, the great illusion or reality. On the other hand, Lucifer is our tendency to be engulfed by inner deceptions and hallucinations. Araman is the pitfall of science. Lucifer is the side ally of mysteries. Man swings from one extreme to the other until he learns to create balance. The Greeks called this balance the golden mean. The Buddha taught his disciples to avoid extremes. The Taoists call it Tao. Lucifer incarnated on earth, according to Steiner, 5,000 years ago, reportedly in China. It also corresponds in time to the emerge of the Jewish god Yahweh. Something could indicate that at the time God and Satan were exchanged so that Yahweh became God and God became a demon or a fallen angel. This is how Yahweh is later described in Christianity. One cannot help but notice when reading the Old Testament that Yahweh's psychological profile is very close to what we understand as a psychopath. Something else might indicate that certain secret societies retained the dualistic concept of God in the form it had before the exchange. In Steiner, we do not find Satan, the devil, and Lucifer to be identical. Lucifer is the bringer of light. In Christian hymns of Mary, the Blessed Virgin is described and sung as Lux Lucifer Oriens. There is singing in pietistic church poetry of O oh, Jesus Morning Star. So what is it? It is nothing but reminiscences of the goddess cult. For the morning star is Venus, the little sun. Get up early in the morning before sunrise and look in the direction of the place where the sun is about to rise. Here on a non cloudy morning a clear star is seen that is not a star but a planet. Venus, named Aphrodite in Greece, Astarte in Phoenicia, Ishtar in Babylon, 
Isis in Egypt. In Christianity, she became Mary, Queen of Heaven. Lucifer is perhaps, in the Steiner concept, the same as paganism. The bringer of light was the culture that existed in antiquity and pre-antiquity and that Christianity fought against. It was the enlightenment science of the old world. Before Paul's Christianity, there was proto-Christianity, which was the Nazarene sect. Jesus was a Nazarene, the fourth sect of Judaism. The Essenes, the Copts, the Gnostics, and all the many schools of wisdom and mystery cults that populated the ancient world. The Romans, the first fascists, corporatized the religion and created a new state cult that, with Constantine the Great, became Christianity and the Catholic Church. Araman enters the world in earnest in our time. Can we spot Araman today? Are we in the middle of the Eighth Sphere? According to Steiner, it is the deception of science But that is not accurate enough. For what science are we talking about? We are talking about a science and a worldview where everything measurable and weighable in the physical sense is existing and everything else qualitative is (gasps) non-existing. Are we talking about the materialistic present paradigm here? If you cannot chew and bite into it, and if it has not been on television between 6 p.m. and 10 (laughs) p.m., then it simply does not exist. It is the materialistic, relativistic universe that emerged in the so-called age of enlightenment. It is the new religion after religion. It is rationalism, positivism, nominalism, and nihilism. It is skepticism, atheism, and modernism. It is a science and physics where consciousness simply does not exist. The big problem of science, as even scientists call it. All these isms words describe what Steiner called the Araman's sphere of influence. The eighth sphere is the great deception, the great illusion, the great seduction in our postmodern reality. It is a world of Google, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram at their worst. It is every man, woman, boy and girl with a mobile phone. It is prison planet Earth, no escape. It is globalist control of all human beings right down to the DNA level. It is satanic ideology that turns all values upside down. It is fake media culture with systemic lies and propaganda. It is false flag operations where people and cattle run into the fold for slaughter. It is Hollywood, perversions, amorality, the degradation of society and civilization. It is a system, corruption, mafia rule, and global fascism. It is eternal wars, genocide, divide, and conquer. It is a global banking system whose main cause is the slave chains of debt. It is global technocracy where the whole man is quantifiable and manipulable. It is the new normal, the transhuman reality, where all human beings on earth submit with face masks, social distancing, censorship, and willingly, in fear that is, give up all civil rights. But the philosopher Steiner is not a dystopian. He dumped a bottle post for prosperity He saw then 100 years ago that there was a hole in the eighth sphere, a time pocket of hope and opportunity. He also saw that the time pocket was closed between 1910 and 1914, where the hell broke loose with revolutions, world wars, the fall of empires and the derailment of the culture of knowledge. But he prophesied with his clairvoyance that 100 years later, there would be a new pocket of time, a new opening for humanity. It's right now. If humanity succeeds in seizing the chance, seizing the day, seizing the opportunity, then we will be able to move free from the eight sphere. If not, well then chances are gone forever. The time pocket is approximately 25 years starting in 2012. Almost 10 years have passed and the clock is ticking. A lot has happened, 
but even more is missing. Okay, so that is interesting, isn't it? Thank you for listening, lovelies. And if you like this podcast and would like to support us, please go to MagicalEgypt.com and I have made a special special discount coupon just for you all and the coupon code is love and that will get you $30 off any magical Egypt purchase. Also, um, I've started a Patreon so you can mosey on over there and uh, see if you want to contribute. But I appreciate you listening and I appreciate all your support and more soon. Thank you.